All right, guys, we got Don Benjamin here. He's done living his best life. You know, he went golfing today, but he had time for me. You might know him. He's a noted model. He's been on Guest. He's all over the billboards, True Religion, Tilly's. He was on America's Next Top Model. He was a semi-finalist. And now he is an author. So how are you, Don? I'm great. I'm good. It's, it's Friday. I feel blessed. I'm alive. I had to tell him it was Friday, by the way, guys. <laughs> I, I didn't I didn't know what day it was. I didn't know, but it's That's Friday. Good. It makes sense. It makes sense. TGIF. Um, so I want to congratulate you on your Drama Free clothing line. Um, How did you come up with the name of Drama Free? Thank you. I, honestly, it was just this year was supposed to be Drama Free. Mm -hmm. It ended up not being Drama Free. It ended up being a really crazy year. And so I was like, you know, let's try to finish the year off strong and go into 2021 on a good note. So. Yep, we're going to be in history books. <laughs> That's crazy. For sure. For yep. sure the wildest, the wildest time I feel like in all of humanity. 100%, like BLM, then COVID, and then lockdown, and then Kobe, and then this, and the Meg Thee Stallion drama, like, you know. <laughs> For real. I was like, what? <laughs> For real. Kanye, you know, crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah, it's crazy right now. But aside from all that, um, you have a sanitizer line, which is Don Benjamin Sanitizer. How did you come up with that? I mean, that's very beneficial. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, just, I try to do things that, like, I need and that I can benefit from. And um, I needed hand sanitizer, and I couldn't find any good ones. And I was in CVS and I was like, these sanitizers are trash. And, you know, I reached out to a, a company that I work with and was like, yo, can we like get a good sanitizer out there that's like has some good quality ingredients that'll like moisturize your hands, smell good maybe. Oh, and <laughs> we, we put it together, we put it together and, and it came out amazing. I love it. I get a lot of good compliments on it. That's good. I haven't tried it yet. Does it have like a scent to it and stuff? Yeah, so I got two. So I got one that smells like a fruit smoothie, and okay. then another one has like a more like cologne smell to it. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Okay, there you go. We'll go get a sanitizer. Is it on your website? Yeah, they're on my website. Yeah. Well, so on my website, it's donbenjamin.com. It's Don Benjamin. And you also have another clothing line, the One Race clothing line as well, right? Was that yeah, one? so. So I have, so I've just been putting out merch. So it's not really like my clothing line right now. I'm, I'm working on a clothing line, but I've just been dropping merch on my site. So I had like some stuff that had my name and pictures on it. Got and it. then I did the one race, human race. Um, I didn't want to have like Black Lives Matters t-shirt. I support Black Lives Matter, 100%. but I wanted, I wanted to have a shirt that kind of brought us all together as one you know and like so I didn't want to do like oh all lives matter of course. but I wanted to have a shirt that like that stood for something like more like bringing us together um so that way the people that felt weird about just straight wearing a black lives matter t-shirt could still have something that would make them wake up and realize like it's bigger than us you know what I'm saying so yeah. I thought with the one race human race everybody could rock it whether you were for Black Lives Matter or you were for All Lives Matter or you like just realize like we're humans at the end of the day. That's it. So um, I wanted to put that out during those times. And then the drama free collection um, I got out right now. It'll probably be out for like another week or two. Um, I'm just giving like small little drops throughout the months. Just like whatever mood I'm in, I'm going to put it out. And hopefully people that are rocking with me want to grab it as well. No, for sure. No, I like that you're using your platform to actually spread more positivity. Like even like the hand sanitizer, it's like, we need sanitizer, one race. Like, and it's true. We are at the end of the day, that's my fight too with everybody. It's like, we you know, at the end of the day, if we're, we're all flesh and bones at the end, you know, like mm -hmm. we're going to go, we came the same way. We left the same way. We speak the same, do the same. So I really like, I really um, jam with that. Also, you're an artist, like you sing now. You have like a boy uh, boy jam out. I ain't, I ain't going back with um, Ryan Lamar. It was a little yeah. hot. Boy, it was like a little hot boy summer jam. How was how was that? Have you always been like singing and like was that always your thing or something new? Well, music was actually my first. That was my first passion, okay. and so I moved to LA. I've been in LA a long time. I've been out here 14 years. 
Yeah, and I moved. I I moved out here for music, and so I had a record before I went on America's Next Top Model. I had a record out that was like placed in TV shows and commercials, like Big Brother and a bunch of other stuff. And then when I went on the show, I had a record with Eric Bellinger that came out that was like getting a lot of traction, and so it kind of aligned like the modeling and music together. Um, so I still like sprinkle the music in. Mm -hmm. when I can but the business side kind of frustrates me so yeah like I'll go like a year without doing music and then I'll just put a record out if I'm feeling the vibe and then I might go another year without it but but the music is like my passion like I love writing hence the book but I love writing so yeah that's dope see I would never know that that's why I like where Tyra Banks said you're more than a pretty face because um, a lot of people do just see like you know, you're good looking, you're handsome, it's easy for you, you know, you're doing all these things. So the fact that your book is called The Truth is what I really like because it's like, there's more to you than just a pretty face. And that's what I want to get into. Um, I read your, like, I read most of your book. Um, I had a, like, in your book, he talks about his dad having an addiction problem and so did my dad. And yeah, and um, so that's kind of like, because I've only known you as surface as well just mm-hmm. like seeing you in the Vine era and seeing you like, you know, I'm in LA, so you're, uh, yeah. you're a popular face. So when I read that, like, I really resonated with that because it's like, oh shit, like you don't really know people until, you know, you get in depth. So that's mm-hmm. kind of what I want to talk to you. So you grew up in um, Southside Chicago, which is a little rough, right? Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, so I, was, I was born on the South Side and then my parents didn't want to raise me on the South Side, so they moved me to Minneapolis, Minnesota. Mm-hmm. which still we were still like in the city and a lot of people moved from Chicago to Minneapolis so it was still kind of rough I don't know my geography <laughs> it's like so it's like it's like two states over okay it's gosh. like two states over so it's it's fairly close but yeah they didn't want to raise me in the chaos so they moved me there but yeah um you know still still kind of had to figure it out still had to be you were still kind of in chaos low-key right yeah yeah so what kind of student were you in school? I know you went varsity basketball. You were good. You at one time you wanted to be a basketball player, right? Yeah, my grades were trash. I didn't oh. like. My, really? My I, thought grades, you were just, I thought you were going to say you were a great student. <laughs> nah, my grades were. I mean, they weren't like horrible, but I was like a D C, maybe like a C plus on a good day. Like average. I had a couple Bs, but. I just like I didn't really care for like school. I just wanted to play basketball mm-hmm. and and that was it. I kind of just tried to get by in school. I never really I never gave it my all, I guess, my paperwork. I tried to like have yeah. the teachers give me the answers and shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's cool. I was kind of a B a B average student too. People think because I'm Indian, like I was like some fucking A student. I was like, nah, <laughs> no, no, that was not me at all. <laughs> Um, but yeah, when you, so, um, you had a little off, like a rough upbringing, like with your family and stuff, we'll get into that. So when you moved to 2005, you moved to LA, would you say it was like an easy, like not an easy ride, but were you just placed in like, right, you know, like, I know you like really believe in God and everything. Do you think that God put you in the right place at the right time? Or did you meet the right people? Cause I used to be low key jealous of you. I'm like, well, I wish I had all these cool ass friends. Like none of my friends yeah. do these things. So yeah. How, how did you come about with getting in the industry? Um, well, I ended up, my I, I had a cousin that lived out here. He was older. He had a family already. So he kind of, he had been doing like background work on movies and TV shows. So okay. he plugged me in with that, but it wasn't like good money. Like I would make like $50 for like a 12 hour day of work. Yeah. And, and so like I was still, yes, yeah, so I wasn't making a lot of money, but I met like some guys on the set of a project Mm -hmm. and we just hit it off right away and like they did music I did music and so we just started kicking it but as far as like I guess getting a break or getting like Mm -hmm. any recognition it was a lot of struggling like those first seven years like we lived like five of us in like a one-bedroom apartment and like we ate like Taco Bell and oatmeal cream pies (laughs) every day and oatmeal cream pies um, it was it was it was a struggle like I I didn't I couldn't get like a job working a nine to five like I would apply at a lot of places mm-hmm. I never got hired um and then I ended up meeting a girl and she had like a record deal she was signed um she was a signed artist and so I ended up moving in with her 
Mm-hmm. And and we were like we were together six and a half years. Oh wow. And then once I went on top model, like the year before top model, we kinda hit like a rough patch and yeah. I was just young and immature. I kinda speak on it in my book, but I was yeah. young and immature okay. and not really that. ready. <laughs> yeah. So um it wasn't really until top model that I had a break, you know, like Tyra gave me my first break. Before that it was struggling. Yeah. I was club promoting, I was hustling, like whatever I could do yeah. to make a dollar, I was doing it. Yeah. And that was in 2015, right? When she gave you like you kind of got a break. Was that 2013? 2013. Yep, yep, yep. Right. Okay. And then I know we we're going to talk about the infidelity and all that. Well, when you moved to LA, like me too, when I first moved to LA, when I found out that I can get into clubs for being cute, it was it was <laughs> It was like a, it was a crazy year for me. Okay, so I was right. everything, and it's something we call lost in the sauce, right? Do you think you got lost right. in the sauce when you were here? When you got your break and like pretty girls partying? I know drugs, no, because you know you've seen it in your family. Yeah. Uh, would you say you were lost in the sauce? I definitely was. Thank God, no drugs, but definitely like drinking every night. Mm-hmm. Um, you know the girls and and like coming from Minnesota. Out here, it's like there's more attractive women than mm-hmm. men. So, like, Minnesota, it's opposite. So, yeah. like, you have to work harder for the girls as to where, like, I feel like girls are in more competition out here. So, yeah, it was it was crazy. Like, when I first came out, I was blown away. And so, yeah, I definitely was lost in the sauce. <laughs> um, I had to kind of, like, figure it out and find my way and, and ground myself for sure. For sure. Yeah. I think a lot of people can relate when they come here, especially when you get your break too. And you come from a small town, you're like, damn, this is easy. This is, this is cool. Uh, But as for, so as for like, you know, getting lost in the sauce, all that, you, you know, you get your popularity and you find a girl that we all know you were with and we were invested. Like we were a couple goals all day. And, and then when you guys broke up, everybody was sad because we're so invested. And um, that's what I wanted to talk to you about is because you talk about infidelity in your book, um, The Mm -hmm. Truth, and you bring, you know, you come out with your truth. Do you, so you say that, so it was because of infidelity, right? That it ended. Y'all got to read the book. I ain't (laughs) telling you. (laughs) Well, y'all got to read the book, but um, what what I want to get into it is where in your book, you do talk about stuff that you went through um, in your childhood and stuff. So like you say, would you say that you brought things that you went in your childhood into your current relationship or your past relationships? And that's why you feel like that's the way, you know, why these relationships ended or why you had to work on stuff? I feel like definitely it's a lot of between generational curses mm-hmm. and, and I feel like, cause I don't want to make an excuse for any act, like every action we know when we're making a bad choice, like we know, in yeah. the moment we're like yo this probably isn't the right thing to do mm-hmm. but maybe i can get away with it or you know maybe the consequences won't be that bad so for me i think growing up watching my father continuously make the wrong decisions fall short in addiction watching a lot of my friends the way they maneuver watching a lot of relationships like i kind of followed in those footsteps and when I would be doing certain things, I would be like, oh, well, as long as I'm good at home or I'm, I'm loving or caring or whatever the case, I can get away with this or I could do this. Yeah. And so yeah. I was kind of like living in this in this mindset that once I realized and I had to pull myself out, that's not really how things are supposed to go. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. So, yeah, I definitely. As a man, you have to put work in a lot of men. You know, because we're as as men, we're taught be a player, have a bunch of girlfriends. You know, like be out, turn up, be dressed to impress, like be the the light of attention. Like all these misconceptions, I feel like that we're taught as young boys, and then we kind of carry that into adulthood. And it's like, so you have to put work in as a man to go back and reconstruct all these things that we're taught. You know what I'm saying? And so for me, it took losing a relationship where I was supposed to get married yeah. for me to have to sit my ass down and like reconstruct things and look back at my life and be like, okay, I can continue to live this way and and do these things or I can straighten up, meet with some mentors, sit with my pastor, 
like mm-hmm. really submit my life to God and like not be half in, half out. And so I feel like that's the challenge that a lot of men have in life is they're like, we want to be stuck in our ways our entire life. You know, it's like, when yeah. do we grow up? Exactly. When do we, when do we, like, is it 40s? <laughs> you know, and, and a lot of times it's like some men will figure it out in their 40s. There's mm-hmm. some men that do figure it out in their 20s. Yeah. But I feel like for men and women, I feel like our 30s is like our prime year 100%. to really like get it together and figure out mm-hmm. where we want our life to go. And so luckily for me, like, with quarantine and everything, I was like, man, I'm gonna buckle down and I'm yeah. gonna really lock in this year. So, so you gotta yeah. do a lot of reflecting. A lot of reflecting. Though. Quarantine did you a little good. You got to sit there and then. Quarantine did me good. Yeah. And then when did you wanna, well, you were number one uh, when your book came out, was the number one new selling mm-hmm. book on Amazon, which congratulations mm-hmm. on that. Thank you. Uh, and I like, so when you were coming up with the concept, I read how you came up with it, but to tell the listeners, um, yeah. When were you like, I want to write a book? Like, I, you're like, I have some shit to say. Like, when was it when you thought about that? Honestly, after after my breakup, mm-hmm. I was like hurt. I was broken because I'm like, I was just sick. And I talked to my life coach. And honestly, it's like, I never really see no vulnerable side to men. You know, like, I don't, there was nobody where I could look to, like, how did they get through this situation? Like, we'll see the Kevin Hart's or we'll see certain like celebrities who have cheated or they went through bad breakups, but we don't get to like see how they pulled themselves through it. Yeah. And so for me, I was like, I can, I can go do a YouTube video and talk about my breakup or talk about what happened. Yeah. Or I can go do something that can live forever and kind of let people into my life and and backtrack and you know not even so much about my relationship because the book isn't just about my relationship but yeah it's I wanted to let I wanted to let people in on my life so that they can kind of look at their life and like reassess if they need to make changes in their life so mm-hmm. for me I felt like the book was something that I could do to where people can look over it look over it and when there's something about reading compared mm-hmm. to watching a video or listening when you read you process the information differently that's true. So for me, I wanted people to like really have to read and process this and like yeah. let it sink in. So, you know, God just put the words in my heart. Like I've never, I never knew I was gonna be able to write a whole book before it just was placed. And I was like, it just happened. Okay. So, and you've been yeah. through some stuff and you have a lot to say. And also you are a prominent figure in, you know, the community. So I feel like it is something like I learned a lot from you. Like I'm a fan by reading your book. Not that I wasn't a fan before, but, but to me, it's like, I get to see more of you rather than like, Oh yeah, Don, like he's a socialist, yeah. you know, whatever. Right. So, so I appreciate like you as a person by reading it also because I have an experience, like people see like my, my Insta model pictures and they're like, Oh yeah, whatever. But they don't know. Right. Depth. So definitely got his read the book, but I did. I mean, I did want to spill some tea. I did see mama V at your, um, your book release. I just want to say that I saw her in the back. So I'm, I'm, I'm guessing things are getting better. I mean, everything like, luckily we're good. Like we're on good terms. Mm-hmm. We still run in a small circle. Yeah. Her parents are like my, like literally like when my father passed away, her dad was like there for me, like my own father. So Aww. luckily, like they didn't like the situation that happened wasn't like you're done out of our family forever. You know, it was just like a wake up call. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like they still they still support me. Me and Leanne are still cool. Like we still run in the same circle. We're still around each other a lot. So I, I thought about that. I'm like, you guys have the same circle, so it must be yeah. hard to just, you know. So it's just we're just working. Like if you're gonna get married to somebody, like you gotta completely work on yourself. Exactly. And so yeah. this situation kind of like allowed us a time to separate for a bit and see if are we gonna come back together or are we better off just friends? You know what I'm saying? Because we were friends before we were even together. Okay. So, so we're just kind of like taking it slow and seeing if we can rebuild a friendship and That's see what right. happens. That's yeah, kind of where it's at. But yeah, everybody's wanna... like, does she hate you? Why are you talking about her? Why are you bring her name up? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. there's other people who are like, they plan this and, you know, you know, when you're in the media, it's like all kinds of different things. I heard things, that too. So. When, when I told somebody I was like, I'm going to talk to you, they're like, was it planned? Is it because he said it? Uh, and I'm like, I right. don't know. Like, I was like, I don't think that it's planned. But 
But you know how yeah, like I didn't like, plan it. I tell people all the time. I tell people like this, like, because I'm a spiritual person. Like, even mm-hmm. though like everybody makes mistakes in their life, but I'm a very spiritual person, and I feel like God don't make mistakes. Like this was okay. it wasn't my plan. Like if it was my plan, everything would be perfect. I'll be getting married this year. But right. whatever happened, like the the messages that I've been receiving since putting my book out like on the people that have dealt with the same thing that were like, they've been searching for a message to connect to, mm-hmm. like is more powerful than I could imagine because there's so many people in the world that are looking and searching for like something to connect to or hope or something or somebody that's been through a similar situation. So for this to happen and now me be able to like help and use my platform for more than just making funny videos or just posting and fucking clothes yeah now i can like help people like pull themselves through some situations or help men not get into certain situations you know what i'm saying so i didn't plan it but it was planned before i even knew it was coming you know that's that's the best answer i love that it's god's Mm -hmm. plan (laughs) exactly god's plan god's plan there you go oh right (laughs) oh there you go i was like what happened oh yeah but um i was gonna say something yeah so my brother really likes you so i wanted to ask my quick question for my brother. He said, where do you come up with your Monday motivation quotes? Like, where do you, what, like, what inspires that? Um, honestly, I come up with it for stuff that I'm like information that I'm searching for. So like I said, like I try to do things for things that are going to help me as well. So if I'm like, I'll go and like search for, for any kind of energy I need. And then and then I'll kind of just put it into my own words and recirculate it and for my followers. Oh. Damn, my, what happened? Oh, sorry. My, my bad. My, my mother blowing me up right it's now. Okay, Damn. I'm like the two. So I'm almost done with you. I'll let you go in a no, second. Nobody, nobody wants us to have a good interview. I know. I'm like, come on. We're almost there. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, that's great. So basically what you're searching for and you, what you learn, you go on and teach it to your uh supporters as well yeah he was telling me he's like ask him about his monday motivate mo- so you motivate my brother i just want you to know that that's dope man tell him i said what's up yeah for sure and then uh but, so you also have an upcoming film project coming up right mm-hmm. when should that be releasing or what is it or is it like a sequel can you talk about it at this point i don't know when we're gonna film it yeah we were supposed to film in may and then it got pushed to like august september and now I'm kind of just on standby with it, but it's yeah. a project that I co-created. I came up with the concept. I got it. Uh, I got it. I'm producer on it. I'm lead actor in it. Um, so it's my baby project, but I play a, a, like a pick fun version of myself, like an aspiring model trying to make it in the industry and then having some life, life changing situations kind of like humble me and sit me down. So, it's like a drama. It's a dramedy. Yeah. Dramedy. Okay, that's cool. I'm looking forward to that. So it's kind of like, would you say it's based on you, but more like dramatized or what would you, or was that? For sure, for sure. It's like parts of it are like based on me. And then like we add like some elements to spice it up. Yeah. It, it was inspired by your experiences. Yeah. Okay. And then I wanted to, before you go, since you know, you are um, giving advice in your book, well, giving, giving a insight, because you don't want to say that you're giving advice, but right. so I'm going to ask you or some of relationship questions. Is it okay to exchange passcode codes with your significant other? Should you have each other's passcodes? Yeah. If it makes you, if, oh my God, mom, Damn. <laughs> come on, blow me up. I blow up my mom too though. If you don't answer, I'm like, why aren't you answering? <laughs> Honestly, if, if it makes each other feel comfortable and you don't have nothing to hide, like you should be able to exchange passwords in the phone. You okay. know, like if you're not hiding nothing, you should be able to exchange it with no worries. There you go. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> uh, what is a proper way to DM a girl? So obviously we're in quarantine right now and it's kind of hard to meet people. I like to meet people with mutual friends, but the way stuff's going on, it's kind of hard. How do you think as a man, because for me, I don't, I think it's like with us as women, if we like you, we like you, you know what I mean? But what would you say, like, if you were to DM someone, like, what is the proper way? Is there a proper way? <laughs> I mean, I feel like, I don't know. I, like, what's cliche? Like, is a compliment? Do you start it off with a compliment or is that too cliche, you know? Um, I think like the worst is like, hi, I'm like, 
what am I supposed to do with that? Like, what do I do with hard right. eyes? Or like hard eyes. And I'm just like, okay, like hard eyes, right. you know? I guess maybe like, it just depends what the compliment is. I had some guy send me a dog emoji. And he's like, oh, hey, Max, come back here. He's like, sorry, he likes to wander off. How are you, though? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. That's clever. That was funny. I think that kind of was like, LOL. You know what I mean? But that was clever. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. But what do you, like, how would you think? Like, if you were to DM a girl, I mean, like, if you were completely, you know, single, how would you do it? I mean, I would probably just give a compliment. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know something. I would just give a compliment. Like, hey, I just wanted to drop by, let you know you're beautiful. <laughs> I love the work. You, like, if I see, I would kind of, like, do some in-depth research on their page and see if they promote, like, their work or something. Yeah. And, like, yeah. just a subtle compliment. Nothing too, Thoughtful. nothing corny. I hate yeah. when people do, like, corny stuff or when dudes, like, oh, you sexy or you beautiful. I yeah. feel like just a simple compliment is, like, perfect. It goes a long way. I, I agree, too, because cor corny is not the way. Yeah, the dog nah. one is funny though. Because a dog one is like a is it could it could not work for you. It could be a little corny. It could be. It was a little corny. It, you'll you'll get an LOL. You know what I mean? It's like ah, right. good try. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, but okay, and then this one's a little okay. This one's a little complicated. Last one. If you saw your girls, let's say if you were with, with Leanne, girl's best friend, cheat out at a party, and you're really cool with her, and she's cheating but you're kind of cool with the boyfriend. You have to hang out with him occasionally. Would you tell the boyfriend? Like, he's like over there, like, man, like this is, she's the one for me, but she's your girl's best friend. And you saw, you know, she's out there doing her thing. And he, this guy is like a nice guy that you hang out with occasionally for a couple, you know, mini couple like hangouts. Cause I feel like a lot of people are in these situations. What would you do? Would you I'm be tell I gotta let, I gotta let him know. I gotta let him know. You will let him know? Hell yeah. Okay, for you got sure. the guy. Because it, it, it's going to be, the, the girl's going to let her, her girl know for sure, no matter what. That's true. We we are going to let her know. We're going to roll up. We'll pull up. For sure. So it's like, you have to let the guys know, especially because I feel like it's, that's more rare. Like, you're not going to see that too often, you know? Yeah. Even if you're just a little cool with them. Just a little bit. I, yeah, yeah. I got, I got to let them know. Or I, maybe I would like let my girl know and like, assess, like let her assess the situation, you know? What if she says, don't tell him? <laughs> that's like the hardest spot to be in. Like, what do you right? do? That's why I wanted like to hardest, ask. That's the hardest position ever. I feel like as a guy, that's a guy code. You have to let them know. You got to let them know. Even if you're just a little cool with them. Even just a little cool, you have to let them know. All right. I like, I mean, I, I get it. I understand that. But us as girls would be like, nah, don't do that. <laughs> well, well, thank you so much, John, for you know making time for me. Even though you <laughs> That's were like a crazy way to end it, <laughs> crazy way we kept rescheduling. You had your, you were living your best life. You had, you know, whatever. But I still appreciate it. You know what I mean? Um, uh, good luck with your book. I will, you guys, please go get his book. Um, you have your signed copies on your website, right? DonBenjamin.com. Yep, I got a few signed copies left. Yep, I do. He has a few signed copies. I saw him physically signing it. Follow him. Um, I think you're a great human being. I love that I got to learn more about you by wanting to interview you. So, um, yeah, so just want to let you know you got another fan. <laughs> Thank you so much. And let me know when it's out so I, could, I can post something. Of course, well. 100%. I will. I'm going to pop post it next week. And, um, yeah, thank you so much. Have fun. Live your best life. And good luck with right. everything. Thank you. Yeah, good to talk to you. You too. Thanks. Bye. Bye.